Hi, everybody. Today, I'm going to introduce a gradient-enriched energy GTN model, uh, that is a non-local model, that we use to model crack extension in, in the present study under small-scale yielding. This work is a common work between EDF, the French electricity company, and Centre des Matériaux École des Mines in France. So as you know, damage model, and in particular models for ductile failure, lead to mesh, mesh size dependency. Here is an example uh, in the case of a CT specimen, which we model using a GTN model. Here you have the force, the crack mouth opening, displacement. The thick curve corresponds to the purely elastoplasty calculation, and the other thin curves correspond to the calculation with different mesh sizes. Here you have 200, 100, 50, 25, 11 microns. And as you know, uh, when we decrease the mesh size, we, we have no convergence. Now this problem is well known. There's another problem, which is maybe not so studied, is the effect of mesh design. Here I'm comparing three meshes of an axisymmetric notch specimen. Here we have a full mesh um, with a very regular mesh. And you see that the crack here corresponds to this red zone that goes through one row of elements. Here on purpose, we have designed a, a mesh with inclined rows of elements. And you see that the crack is going to, to follow the row of elements. And here we have only mesh half of the specimen due to uh, symmetries. And if you compare the thickness of the crack compared to the first one, that it's about twice as thick because you break, in fact, because of the symmetry, you break two elements and therefore you also dissipate more energy. So uh, there's another problem which we also solve with the uh, model we introduced is the problem of uh, uh, quasi incompressibility of this material which will lead to very poor evaluation of pressure and therefore of damage, because damage depends on, on pressure. Uh, here is probably the worst you can do using standard linear elements. Uh, and here you have the opening stress field with very strong fluctuations. Here, we, if we use a, a technique with, to control pressure here with linear elements, this corresponds to the D-bar method, then you get indeed a much a smoother stress. Now this is something that must be accounted for in, in the modeling. So in, uh, in this talk, I'm going first to, to present a novel gradient enhanced energy model, and then apply it to crack initiation and propagation in small scale yielding. I have another, another example dealing with carbon manganese steel, but I probably won't have enough time to present it. Ductile failure is always accompanied with very large strain, so it's very important to use a finite strain formalism. The one we use here is uh, based on the logarithmic strain measure, uh, where F is the uh, transformation gradient. So F here can be split into an elastic part and a plastic part so that more or less the model can be written as if it was small strain behavior, which is indeed not the case. In the following, uh, our variable, which we use for regularization, is going to be the cumulative plastic strain. So here are some equations to, to introduce the model. Uh, we write the uh, free energy in the following form. Here we have the classic elastic part, the standard plastic part, and we add a part in which the gradient of uh, the plastic strain plays an important role, and that is to prevent to have a too high a plastic strain gradient. The problem is how do we compute uh, the gradient of P? Because P in standard IFE procedures is known at Gauss point. So to solve the problem, we are in introducing another variable, which we call A, which is defined at node, and this is an unknown of the problem, just as the displacement. And A is the plastic strain at the node, uh, so, so it needs to be as close as possible to uh, the plastic strain at Gauss point. So to do that, we introduce a Lagrange multiplier L that will enforce the condition P equals A 
in a weak sense. Indeed, now, because A is known at nodes, we can compute the gradient fairly easily. Um, if we follow um, a thermodynamic, thermodynamical procedure, when we have all the associated forces to the various uh, parameters of the free energy, in, in particular, I will uh, uh, introduce the variable which is associated to the plastic strain, where you have R, which is just the derivative of this phi here, which is the standard flow stress, minus the uh, Lagrange multiplier. And this is going to introduce the non-local regularization. Um, if we, we have written the weak form, if we go to the strong form, then indeed we have A equals P, that's the uh, condition we want to enforce. But we also have an equation linking the plastic multiplier L to uh, the Laplacian of uh, the nodal variable A. And here, uh, I didn't mention that in a previous slide, two important parameters. Ln is a characteristic length, uh, which is going to, to describe how thick the localization bond will be, and sigma zero is just the yield strength of the material. Now the flow stress uh, in this non-local formulation is the standard flow stress minus a corrective term which depends on the Laplacian of A. If you have a localization bond like this one at the center of the, of the bond where plastic strain is maximum, then the Laplacian is negative. That means that this term here is positive because of the minus sign. Therefore, the flow stress in the no-local sense is always higher than the uh, standard uh, flow stress, and this induces a regularization effect. This uh, model was implemented in the implicit code, Z set for Ecole des Mines and Codaster for EDF. We uh, used a mixed formulation in which uh, quadratic nodes are used to interpolate the displacement, and linear node, that is the corner nodes, are used to interpolate the uh, plastic strained nodes and the plastic multiplier. We also have an additional treatment for pressure fluctuation, which I'm, I'm not going to, to describe in, in detail in this presentation. So the damage model we use here, but any kind of model could be used, is the uh, well-known GTN model. Uh, the equation which is usually used to describe the flow, the yield, the surface of the, of the model, is here used to define an equivalent stress, sigma star, so that, one, so that we can rewrite the yield surface as follows, where here you have the equivalent stress, effective stress, I would say, minus the flow stress, which is corrected by uh, the non-local uh, regularization term. This formulation is exactly equivalent to the standard uh, GTN model, but it's easier to, to implement. So once again, uh, the question is now, does this solve the mesh dependence? Uh, here again is a, a simulation of a notch bar with a local model. Thick line is without damage, thin lines are with different mesh sizes, and we see that there is no convergence, although you get a nice crack advance in the specimen. When we use the model, we get that kind of uh, result. So once again, that's the force, that's the diameter variation in the minimum cross section. Thick line is no damage. Dashed line here is what happens with the standard local models. And here we used uh, mesh sizes from 200 microns down to 25 microns. And you see that there is a nice convergence as soon as we, we reach something like 100 microns in that, in that case. Do we solve the problem linked to mesh orientation? This is a slide you have already seen. Uh, with the effect in particular of a full regular, a full straight mesh and a full inclined mesh. We use the non-local model and this nicely solves the problem where you have a straight crack in all cases. In that case, it's, it's very thick, but it, it depends really on the uh, damage parameter you are using. So this model was applied to crack initiation in, on propagation in the case of small scale yielding. So to do that, we use the boundary layer model. Here we have a crack at the center of a very large disk. At the boundary of the disk, we impose the displacement corres corresponding to a Williams condition. And parameter J can be computed from the stress intensity factor using Ehring's formula. Here an example of the mesh we are 
using. So that's the overall mesh. And here's a zoom on uh, the, the notch here, the initial notch on, on the crack path. If you do the dimensional analysis, then you find that the J delta A curve is uh, a function of the yield stress time, this uh, non local length, times uh, on a function of non dimensional parameter. Here you have delta A over the non local length, elastic parameter, parameter the square bit hardening, and indeed all the parameters of the damage model. So once again, we check mesh size convergence and we try to determine the bond width. So you see that as soon as the element size is about one half of the uh, non-local length, then we get a converged J delta A curve. Here, everything is normalized with respect to the non-local distance. We uh, define in this particular case, the localization bound as the zone where the porosity is two times the critical porosity for coalescence in, for the GTN model, uh, which is in that case is 0.1. With this, we find that the width of the localization bound is about 1.3, 1.5, the non-local distance, which if you uh, use the previous rule correspond to three times the, the uh, element height. So if you, if you know, uh, the bandwidth you want to describe, then you know the uh, maximum element size that you are allowed to use. So we use this uh, model to, uh, to propagate cracks. And here you have an example of damage and stress profile. Um, so at the beginning, you just have plasticity and you have crack blunting and fairly smooth crack profile. And this corresponds to the two first curve of here for damage. At some point, crack will initiate and uh, the we have a transition from um, blunting regime to a stationary crack growth regime. What we can notice here, which was not so much expected, is that we, we indeed retrieve the uh, stress profile ahead of a blunted crack, but not propagating. As soon as the crack propagates, then this stress profile becomes much sharper and thanks to the local model, we can nonetheless very accurately uh, describe it. Okay, so here is another example, uh, which is in that case is applied to a real material in construction steel. We did tests on the tensile test, some notch bars and CT specimen. The, the model was fitted to represent uh, notch bars, but also uh, the CT specimen. Here you have an example of damage growing from the center of the specimen. Uh, that's the damage at crack initiation around here, and that's how damage develops within the minimum cross section of the specimen. Uh, what is interesting in, the, in this uh, work is that we had access to tests on uh, full size uh, specimen. That's a tube in which a defect, crack in fact, was machined on, and was propagating using fatigue and the specimen was broken on this uh, very big setup. Um, here is an example of the load displacement curve. You see that the uh, maximum load is about 2.5 mega Newton. So that's a fairly large structure. So we use the fitted model. The crack path is very, is very complex. And we, in this study, we were just studying the initiation of, of the crack, basically the creation of uh, a tongue-like crack from uh, the fatigue, uh, fatigue crack. After that, the uh, crack goes slanted and there's also some kind of tilting out of the plane of symmetry. So we were just interested in, in the initial crack uh, stages, crack growth stages. So here's the IFI model with a very fine zone where you have, uh, where the crack is going to propagate. This might be a very small zone, but nonetheless, we need two, two millions degrees of freedom to, to model that. But once again, we, not, we have the displacement plus extra degrees of freedom to describe damage and to regularize pressure. What is interesting is, is that you see that at the inner surface and outer surface, the crack tends to leave its plane of symmetry 
so it, it starts to go tilted, whereas at the center, it remains straight. And that's basically what we observe in the simulation. We also have run local calculation. And using local calculation, it's impossible to get that crack uh, tilting. I think it's time for some conclusion. So in this presentation, I have proposed a non-local formulation to simulate ductile extension. I've I've shown results on small scale yielding, but also very rapidly on a large test, a large scale test. So many problems are still remaining. We definitively want to carry out 3D, 3D calculation. And the size of the problem is a very limiting, limited, limiting factor. Here we have an example that's the small scale yielding problem of a crack propagating. Um, you see here we have a fine mesh everywhere. So basically, when the crack is just starting, we have the entire presumed crack path, which, which is meshed with very fine elements, which is somehow uh, losing, uh, losing uh, space on the computer. And when the crack has gone through the material, we have a lot of fine elements which remains, and basically they're not loaded anymore, so we could coarsen the mesh. So the solution we are investigating, investigating now and that's an example of cup cone fracture in 3D is to use remeshing uh, linked with the non-local model so that we can always keep small, small element basically in the crack process zone and refine the mesh ahead of this zone and coarsen the mesh in the zone where the crack has already gone. Thank you very much for your attention.